a character acquainted and fierce, powerful yet graceful as woven a trail across oceans and borders, languages and cultures, creating a strangely perfect sort of unity melded only under a divine hammer. She stands watching over the delicate, serene trickle of Ireland's holy wells and stoic Welsh cathedrals. Beloved by poets, Bridget was a pre-Christian Irish goddess of fertility and life. And as a member of the Tweedy Denon, she was the master of healing, sharing similarities with the Catholic St. Bridget of Kildare, a patron saint of Ireland. Originating from the proto-Celtic word Briganti, meaning the high or the exalted one, the name Bridget has been anglicized from the old Irish break in multiple ways, becoming the popular term for bride. The name likely refers to the goddess's connection to sunlight and fire, as in the English word bright, but may also be related to dawn goddesses across the Indo-European world, thus it turned into the general term for goddess. You might know her as Bridget, but pronunciations vary according to the local dialect, so you will see various sources in Ireland, Scotland, Welsh, France and even England firmly telling you that she should be called Bridget, Bridget. Brigitte, Briganti, and so on. Bridget often appeared as a goddess with fiery hair wearing a cloak. She was apparently of great significance, a paradoxical and unique figure distinguished by curious bifurcations of identity. Depending on the tale, she appears in the form of a maiden or as a mother blessing children, and her domain over fertility and motherhood included not only mortals and gods, but animals as well. Some scriptures mention Bridget as an entity with the status of a triple goddess. In fact, given the diversity of her attributes, she was believed by many to be a fate-like deity with multiple forms, perhaps a tree of sisters known for their ability to forecast future events. However, unlike most triple goddesses in Ireland, all of her aspects were named Bridget and had dominion over smithcraft, healing and poetry. This triplication is a frequent occurrence among the Celts, typically in order to emphasize a figure's divine power, and as such, he allowed her to have multiple husbands, different parents and children without causing contradictions in the Celtic mythos. Bridget is a rarity among the Celts as a goddess full of contradictions. She is associated with healing, fertility, motherhood but also of passion and fire. Nevertheless, Bridget was a goddess of serenity and water due to her connection to waterways. The evidence of her worship has been found in every part of Ireland, reflecting her importance as a powerful yet personal deity. Though she was considered to have skills in healing and metalwork, she was particularly venerated for her importance in poetry and innovations. When she was not protecting mothers and newborns, Bridget inspired many writers and poets for which Ireland is internationally renowned for. This rich description of her as a supreme sage of poetry shows a special bond between her and the professional poets who used to worship her. Even into the Christian period, Irish novelists credited Bridget as their inspiration. Her connection to healing and wisdom were features inherited from her father who was a master of magic and mysticism. The ability she had to always know what was needed was one of her many sacred gifts. Her status as a fire goddess was also apparent in her connection to the sun, and dawn in particular. Her epithet, the exalted one, reflected not only her nature as a soul deity, but her connection to crafting and wisdom as well. She was even made a goddess of life and death thanks to her invention of kinning, which was believed to represent a lament of the dead. Therefore, she protected the cemeteries found at any of her holy sites. The Lobogabala Iran established Bridget as the daughter of the Dagda, a great god and chief of the Tuedidanan, thus placing her in position of high esteem. In some sources her mother was Danu, a powerful river goddess and the namesake mother goddess of the Tuedidanan. She was the consort of one of the prominent early kings of Ireland the unfortunate breast market and both had a son. Bridget came to Ireland alongside the rest of the Tuedidanan, 
but shortly after the arrival the tribe came into conflict with the Furbolg and the Fomorians. Bridget appeared in a number of Celtic myths and legends, often in roles displaying her range of skills and immense knowledge. However, the only time she was mentioned in an actual narrative was in the second battle of Moitura. Both battles of Moitura placed the Tweededanan against the prior settlers of Ireland. The first battle ended up in a victory over the Falbolg as well as the annexation of Karnacht. Then, the Tweededanan were up against the Fomorians, fearsome giants of hideous appearance and abhorrent cruelty. This battle was also a victory of the Tweededanan, but Bridget lost her son unfortunately. And when rushing to the battlefield to mourn his death, from her lips came a loud lament known as Kinning. This act was the first time sorrow had been felt in Ireland, thus giving birth to a solemn tradition. Henceforth, it became common practice for Irish women to kin at the graves of their loved ones. Many tales existed of strangers who came to Bridget asking for her blessings, but these would only come to those pure of heart and kind of intention. To those lacking of these things, her blessings would only come in the form of a lesson that would give them what they actually need to be better individuals. Bridget became Christianized as St. Bridget of Kildare, who founded the first female Christian community in Ireland. Scholars have long puzzled the link between the two, but historical evidences have demonstrated that the saint took on many of the goddesses' attributes of her time. The Celtic festival of Imbolc, which is celebrated on February 1st, is meant to honor the pagan goddess, equally marking the beginning of the Irish year. During the holiday, those seeking her blessings often ask for healing, inspiration, and protection. This ancient festival continues to be celebrated today because the same date was adopted for the Feast of Bridget the Saint by the Christian calendar. Little could be verified about the life of St. Bridget, but legends are filling the blanks. She was apparently born of a Christian mother and a pagan Celtic king. She was later named by the Druids of the court after the pan-Celtic divinity. When grown, she refused marriage to the extent of pulling her eyes from their sockets to make herself so ugly no one would have her. But she recovered then set out in search of a place for her convent. Because of it, she is believed to have built one of the greatest religious centers in ancient Ireland. Based in some accounts, the nuns had for 500 years kept an undying flame burning to Bridget the Saint, a tradition that recalls certain fire rituals stemming from Celtic religion. The Irish conflation of the Celtic goddess and the Christian saint seems even stronger outside Kildare, where various traditions of greeting the rising spring at Inbolc were sustained through the late years of the 20th century. In other parts of the Celtic world, Bridget may also be related to Indo-European dawn goddesses. So few writers occasionally linked her to the Greek Athena. For others, she was seen as a bringer of civilization like Vesta or Estia, who ruled the social contract from their position in the heart of each home. Through Saint Bridget, the goddess became Mama Brigitte in Haiti, a voodoo lower and the wife of Baron Samedi. Much like the pan Celtic divinity, Mama Brigitte reigned over life, death, fertility, cemeteries, and motherhood. The ancient goddess Bridget is enshrouded in veils of conjecture, because the further back you go, the less there is. Knowing this Celtic divinity should begin with knowing the people who worship her from ancient times. The Celtic people didn't write down their religious beliefs, and they didn't freely share them with cultures that did record such things like the Romans. They believed that important tales should only be told to good people and to those who understood their context. We mostly know about the gods of pre-Christian Celts because of descriptions written by their conquerors and we can add some speculation based on archaeological findings and sacred locations. But many stories and customs associated with Bridget have made their way through in the form of folklore. Therefore, we can guess how the powers of Bridget were by looking at which attributes were preserved when a goddess were called a saint. Piecing it all together, a vision of Bridget can start shining through the covers. 
as the variations of a name attest, her worship was encompassing not only Ireland, Scotland, and England, but also much of Europe. The goddess Bridget has crossed the gap from a regional land deity to a Christian saint and back again to a modern goddess of global scope distinct as a multitude of tongues that speak her name and deeply rooted in creation, regeneration and contradictions. I hope you've liked watching this video, so until next time everyone. And as always, stay curious.